The Battle of Fanchin or the Battle of Fan Castle was fought between the wards Lu Bei and Cao Cao in 219 in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. It is named after Fanchin in present-day Xiangyang, Hubei, a fortress that played a significant role in the battle. Chapter 1 Background In 218, Imperial physician Ji Ben, along with minor treasurer Geng Ji and minister Wei Huang began an insurrection against Cao Cao in his capital of Shichang, but were quickly quelled and executed. In November 218, Cao Cao sent General Cao Ren to Wan in preparation to launch a strike against Guan Yu. However, due to Cao Ren's wanton policy of conscription and forced labor, Hao Yin, a military officer under Cao Cao, started a rebellion in with his deputy Wei Kai and several thousand troops from Wan's citizenry, and requested help from Guan Yu. By February 219, Cao Ren had crushed the rebellion and killed Hao Yin and Wei Kai, and massacred the citizenry of Wan. After taking Hanjong commandery by defeating Cao Cao in the Hanjong campaign in May 219, Liu Bei further expanded his territorial gains in June 219 by sending Mengdu and Liu Feng to take Fangling and Shangyong commanderies. Cao Cao was temporarily forced to be on the defensive after these continuous setbacks. Realizing the imminent attacks of Liu Bei and possibly Sun Quan, Cao Cao planned to launch a preemptive strike on southern Jing province, the eastern part of Liu Bei's territory defended by Guan Yu. The plan reasoned that Liu Bei could not continue his offensive in the north due to the need to consolidate his new gains, and so an attack into southern Jing province would not be hindered by Liu Bei's invasion elsewhere. However, the plan was called off because Cao Cao's troops still needed time to recover, regroup, and resupply from the campaign to suppress the rebellion of Hao Yin and Wei Kai, as well as from earlier setbacks in the struggles for Hanjong commandery. The worn-out troops were not ready for another campaign. Chapter 2 – Battle Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Initial Stages In July, 219, Guan Yu decided to launch an offensive of his own against Cao Cao to build on the conquest of Hanjong. He ordered Mi Fang and Shi Ren to stay behind to guard Jiangling County and Gongan County respectively during his absence while he personally led Liu Bei's forces in southern Jing province to attack Cao Cao's strongholds in the north. The campaign's objective was not clearly stated, but Guan Yu led his army along the Han River northward until he laid siege to Fanqing. From the advance route and the fact that Guan Yu chose to concentrate his main forces on Fanqing, his primary objective was believed to be the conquest of Nanyang commandery. Initially, the cities being attacked were not heavily guarded, as Cao Ren at Fanqing and Liu Chang at Xiangyong were both surrounded. Therefore, Cao Cao ordered Yu Jin to aid Cao Ren. After pitching camp on a lower ground about four kilometers north to Fanqing, Yu Jin started to prepare a counter-offensive. Eager to prove his loyalty as he was suspected by others, Cao Cao's general Pang De volunteered to lead a detachment to engage Guan Yu, successfully forcing the latter to retreat several times. On one occasion, Pang De fired an arrow that became embedded in Guan Yu's helm. Since then Pang De was widely known and feared among the enemy as General White Horse because of the white steed he rode into battle. Although Guan Yu could not defeat Pang De in battle, he nevertheless held firm control over the water routes around the area, and maintained the encirclement of Fanqing. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Turning of the Tide in August, heavy rains caused the Han River to flood. Forces under the command of Yu Jin and Pang De were completely annihilated by the natural disaster, suffering at least 40,000 fatalities, and another 30,000 were captured by Guan Yu's navy. Pang De and Yu Jin were both captured, Yu Jin begged for his life and surrendered, while Pang De refused to surrender and was executed. Prior, when Hui had warned Cao Ren beforehand of the potential radical weather changes in the south and feared Guan Yu would use river floods to his advantage. Cao Ren, with several thousand of his surviving troops, were forced on the defensive by staying behind the safety of the walls. At the time, Xu Huang, who was stationed in Wanking with his force purely consisting of new recruits, 
was only able to set up defensive fortifications instead of venturing out to relieve Cao Ren. Meanwhile, the inspector of Jing province, Hu Xu, and Cao Sa's administrator of Nan Town, Fu Fang, both defected to Guan Yu. The rebel leaders of Liang, Jia, and Lun counties also officially accepted Guan Yu's command. Cao Cao considered relocating the capital, due to the immense threat Guan Yu began to pose. When Cao Cao asked his advisors for input, Sima Yi and Zhang Ji strongly opposed. They pointed out that the alliance between Liu Bei and Sun Quan was shaky at best due to the feuding over control of Jing province, and Sun Quan would definitely be unhappy to see Guan Yu's success. They suggested that Cao Cao send an emissary to Sun Quan to recognize the latter's control over Jiang Nan should Sun Quan agree to flank Guan Yu's rear. Initially, Sun Quan sent an emissary to Guan Yu relating his wish for a marriage to be arranged between his own son and Guan's daughter. However, Guan Yu insulted the emissary and rejected the marriage proposal, infuriating Sun Quan. During the campaign in Xiangyang, Guan Yu's military numbers rose and exhausted his food supply. Because of this, Guan Yu supposedly sent out troops to confiscate grains stored in Xiang Guan, within Sun Quan's territory around 600 kilometers from Xiangyang's location. Sun Quan used this incident, coupled with Guan Yu's rejection of Sun Quan's marriage proposal and insult, to justify severing the alliance with Liu Bei. At the outbreak of the battle, Liu Bei controlled three commanderies in southern Jing province, Nan, Lingling, and Wuling. Chapter 2 Section 2, Stalemate Guan Yu further ordered reinforcements from Jiangling and Gongan to lay siege to the now flooded Fanqing. With only several thousand troops left, Cao Ren was also plagued by low food supplies, so he considered abandoning Fanqing. Someone also urged him to escape while there was still time, since Guan Yu's forces had not completely surrounded Fanqing yet. Man Chong, the administrator of Runan, disagreed and said, the flood waters may be flowing very fast, but the flood might not last long. Guan Yu had already sent a detachment of troops from his army to station at Jia County. There is already much panic and fear among the people living in the lands south of Shu County. Guan Yu doesn't dare to advance further because he's worried that his base will come under attack. If we abandon Fanqing and leave, we'll end up losing all the territories south of the river. Sir, you should continue to hold up here. Cao Ren agreed with him. Man Chong drowned his horse and pledged to stay with the soldiers in Fanqing to the end. Cao Ren also strengthened Fanqing's defenses, increasing the number of his troops to over 10,000 by drafting every available man in the city and going around the city rallying his soldiers. As Xu Huang was ordered to reinforce Cao Ren, Cao Cao sent two officers, Xu Shang and Lu Jian to lead additional reinforcements to join Xu Huang, ordering the latter not to attack until all of the reinforcements sent to him had arrived. To wait for further reinforcements, Xu Huang pushed toward Yangling, located to the north of Fanqing. As the majority of Cao Cao's force under Xu Huang's command consisted of new recruits, Xu faithfully carried out Cao Cao's order to restrain from attacking. Guan Yu was well aware of Xu Huang's situation, but due to confidence from the earlier victory had ignored Xu Huang's threat and divided his forces, sending another army to Xiangyang, believing that Fanqing would fall into his control. However, Guan Yu was unsuccessful in breaking through the city's defense. Xu Huang afterwards seized the opportunity opened by Guan Yu dividing his forces, as Guan Yu's vanguard situated around three miles to the north of Fanqing, leaving a gap between it and the main army. Xu Huang faked the digging of a long trench, giving the false impression of cutting off Guan Yu's vanguard, which fell for the trick and retreated. Xu Huang's army therefore took the abandoned stronghold at Yen and pressed further toward Guan Yu's main army. By this time, 10,000 battle-hardened veterans led by Yin Xu and Zhu Gai had joined Xu Huang, emboldening Xu Huang's army enough to pose a threat to Guan Yu. Chapter 2 Section 3 Strategies During the stalemate, Cao Cao's emissary returned to Luoyang with a letter from Sun Quan, 
which informed Cao that Sun planned to attack Guan Yu from the rear in Jing province. Sun Quan asked Cao Cao to keep this secret so that Guan Yu would not be prepared, and most of Cao Cao's advisors agreed with the plan. However, Dong Zhao objected, pointing out that Liu Bei and Sun Quan are both adversaries of Cao Cao despite the temporary submission of Sun Quan to Cao Cao. For the long term, it would be in the best interest of Cao Cao to weaken both adversaries, instead of letting one adversary become too strong. In the short term, if Guan Yu knew about Sun Quan's attack in his rear, he would certainly withdraw his army to reinforce his home base in Jing province, and the siege of Fanqing would be lifted. In addition, Fanqing had been under siege for some period of time, and the morale of Cao Cao's forces was low. If this critical information was not passed along to the defenders, some people inside Fanqing might turn their back on Cao Cao, because food supplies were running out. Furthermore, Dong Zhao pointed out that even if Guan Yu knew Sun Quan's intention, he would not retreat swiftly because of his stubbornness and his confidence in the defense of Jiangling and Gongan counties. Cao Cao and others were convinced by Dong Zhao and did exactly what he had proposed, copies of Sun Quan's letter was tied to arrows, which were then shot into Fanqing and Guan Yu's camp by Xu Huang's archers. The defenders' morale increased, while Guan Yu was put in a dilemma, he did not want to abandon the attack on Cao Cao, because he believed that Jiangling and Gongan counties, his rear bases, would not easily fall. Furthermore, Guan Yu had conjectured if the enemy defenders were defeated, Sun Quan would exploit the opportunity to attack Cao Cao's weakened defenses instead of attacking the three commanderies under Liu Bei, as Guan Yu anticipated Sun Quan would have more to gain in taking the vast region in the eastern region downstream the Yangtze River from Cao Cao than in taking Liu Bei's three commanderies. As Guan Yu was hesitating, Cao Cao personally led another reinforcement army to the battlefield and had already reached Mo Bei. Chapter 2 Section 4 Conclusion The bulk of the forces under Guan Yu's command was camped in Weiatu, while the remaining camped in Saizhou. Xu Huang spread the word of an imminent attack on Wei Tu, but instead, he led his forces to strike Sai's Hong unexpectedly. Fearing the Sai's Hong camp would be lost, Guan Yu led 5,000 troops to the rescue, but the attack of Sai's Hong was only a decoy, as Guan Yu became ambushed by Xu Huang's men when he was on his way for the rescue mission. The defeated Guan Yu withdrew to his main camp, but Xu Huang's force followed closely behind and charged into Guan's main camp, successfully killing the defectors Hu Xu and Fu Fang. With his camp overrun by the enemy, Guan Yu was forced to concede defeat by lifting the siege of Fanqing and retreating southward. All of Cao Cao's commanders at the front line believed that they should take advantage of the situation and pursue Guan Yu, except Zhao Yan, who pointed out that they should not pursue Guan Yu because Guan's force, should be left alone so that they could fight Sun Quan, thus weakening both Cao Cao's adversaries. Cao Ren agreed with Zhao Yen and did not pursue Guan Yu, and sure enough, when news of Guan Yu's retreat reached Cao Cao, he sent an emissary to Cao Ren, prohibiting him from giving a chase for exactly that reason. Chapter 3 Aftermath When Guan Yu returned south, he discovered that his rear bases in Jiangling and Gongan counties had both surrendered to Lu Meng, the commander of Sun Quan's westward army. Lu Meng held hostage the wives and children of Guan Yu's men, but treated them, and the citizenry of Jing province with utmost care. Guan Yu's soldiers, hearing that Jing province had fallen to Sun Quan and that their families were in good hands, lost their will to fight and deserted. Guan Yu, with only a handful of men left, became isolated in Meicheng with Sun Quan's forces on three sides and Cao Cao's in the north. As Guan Yu attempted to escape, he and his surviving followers, including his son Guan Ping and subordinate Zhao Lei, were captured in an ambush near Jiang district by Sun Quan's generals Zhu Ran and Pan Zhang. Guan Yu was later executed by Sun Quan at Linju, along with Guan Ping and Zhao Lei. Chapter 4 Order of Battle. Chapter 5 In Romance of the Three Kingdoms. In the 14th century historical novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the flooding of the Han River was not a natural occurrence, but instead was planned by Guan Yu. 
Guan had the rivers dammed and the dam opened when it was full, thus drowning Cao Cao's armies in the lower plains. This event was known as the drowning of the seven armies. Pang De put up firm resistance and attempted to escape by swimming, but was captured by Guan Yu's subordinate Zhou Kang. In contrast, Yu Jin was depicted pleading for his life and surrendering to Guan Yu. Several weeks later, Sun Quan, who had secretly allied with Cao Cao, attacked Guan Yu's army at Jiangling. Sun Quan surprised and defeated Guan Yu's forces there, forcing Guan to lift the siege on Fanqing and retreat. Guan Yu and his son, Guan Ping, while fleeing to Yi province, were caught and executed by Sun Quan's soldiers. Chapter 6 In Popular Culture In Koei's video games Dynasty Warriors 4 and Dynasty Warriors 5, Guan Yu is depicted as simultaneously defending the lands of Jing province and besieging Fan Castle. The second location is the focus of the stage. Cao Ren is the defending commander, and Sun Quan's forces later appear as reinforcements for Cao Ren. Notably, Pang De takes a prominent role, and proves to be a dangerous opponent for Guan Yu and his allies in this stage. In Dynasty Warriors 7, the defense of Fanqing is focused on Wei's side, the invasion of Jing province is focused on Wu's side, and retreating to Meicheng is focused on Xu's side. 